liver skating. Uh, 303 Bruzy Sue. 333 Cookie Rumble. 728 Combat Cat. N20 Cool Whip. Number 76 uh, Del Bomber Not Skating. Number 22 Effin Money. Number 11 L Eminator. Also Not Skating L McPherson. Number 6. Fatal Femme is in there for number 46. Uh, we've got number 8 Ghetto Barbie. Number 100 Polly Fester. Number 28 Racer McChaser. Number 5 Sista Slitcha. Number 223 Spanish Assassin. And number 68 Summer's Evil. Those will be skating in the bout today. For Minnesota, we've got number 9, Kilimanjaro. Number 21, Tara Skates Off. Number 25, Honeydew Felon. Number 28, Scarman Electra. Number 55, Venus, Spy, Venus Thigh Trap. I'm, no, no, you got me doing it. <laughs> number 69, Voodoo Prodigy. Number 91, Susie Smashbox. Number 109, Psycho Novia. Number 187, Lexicutor. Number 333, Coochie Coo. Number 1837, Diamond Rough. Number A18, Jukebox. Number F16, Citizen Pain. And number 8U, Tiki Torture. And we're getting ready to start here. It looks like we have Scarman Electra jamming for Minnesota in the turquoise. And number and number 5, Sista Slitcha in the black for Detroit. And we are off. This is the this is the second quarterfinal game in in the winner again will go against Mad Roland Dolls. Here we go, Racer McChaser up front, and she gives a whip to Sister Slitcher, and she is out of the pack for lead jammer, first lead jammer of the game. Scarman Electra stuck at the back of the pack with a strong strong Detroit defense. Now it looks like Venus Thigh Trap gives Scarman Electra a whip, but she is stopped in her tracks. Racer McChaser right up there in in front with F and Money. On the two wall, and here comes Fatal Femme coming in to shore up that front wall for Detroit. I tell you what's interesting to watch right now is the pack play. It's been kind of separated. You see an attention of Detroit right in the middle, Minnesota up front, Minnesota in the back, and then immediately it all just kind of switches up. I think right now what they're trying to do is feel each other out and see what strategy they're going to go for. We're going to call off that jam right there, and it looks like Detroit has had a pretty successful jam, although I do believe it's still... Got to be Detroit 5 over Minnesota 0. That's right. Sister Slitchick got through the pack, picked up those four points, and Scarman Electra got out of the pack just in front of her. But Sister Slitchick catches up to Scarman Electra, nabs that jammer lap point, and she, uh, a.k.a. Well, you what used to be called the Grand Slam point, but now it's the jammer lap point. Uh, and that's going to be put five points on the board for Detroit, zero points still for Minnesota. Now we've got Racer McChaser, team captain for Detroit jamming. She's going to be jamming against Lexi Cuter, number 187 for Minnesota. Lexi Cuter going to the outside, cuts back to the end. She's still heel to steal with number 28 from Detroit. Let's see who's going to break out of the pack first. It looks like Detroit is going to, again, have lead jammer status. Racer McChaser just battered her way past number 333, Coochie Coo, team captain for, uh, for, for Minnesota, and gets out of the pack for lead jammer. Lexi Cuter, though, just about five strides behind Racer McChaser. Both jammers making their way around to the pack for a scoring pass. We're expecting a hit it and quit it, as they say. What Point a fast pack we have right now. Right now it looks like Minnesota was kind of up front, and the squad of Detroit hanging in the back, running out of time there. But it looks like Detroit picks up one, and as one you point. say, she hit it and quit it. Hit it and quit it. That was uh, Tiki Torture trailing at the back of the pack, Minnesota. That's the one skater that Racer McChaser passed on her way into the pack before she called it off. Scarman Electra lining up again for the second time. Uh, she jammed in the first jam against Sister Slitch, and now she's paired up against Effin Money, number 22 for Detroit. Effin Money, one of the smaller skaters on the track today. You could say that. You could, I, I just did. Oh, that's a fact, actually. <laughs> All right, uh, Effin Money gets around, uh, gets tries to get around Honeydew Melon, I should say, but uh, Felon, Honeydew Felon, though, knocks her out of bounds, and she's at the back of the pack. Scarman Electra, though, tied up behind Bruzy Sue and Booty Livers. That's an interesting name, Booty Livers. <laughs> I haven't figured that one out. I don't know if it's a pun or uh, what. <laughs> I don't know. Is, is it on the menu or is it an innuendo? I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, Cool Whip and Polly Fest are unable to stop Scarman Electra. Scarman Electra pushing past that 20-foot boundary and gets a free pass, picking up lead jammer for Minnesota for the first time this game. Took quite a while for lead jammer status to be awarded. There is just at over one minute left in this jam. 
and Effin does make it to the pack. Her next pass will be her scoring pass, but there it goes right there. Minnesota gets through. She picks up a couple of points and calls off the jam. That's right. Nice work by Boo Delivers, knocking Scarman Electra down to her down to her knees, and she's going to call off the jam, play the safety pickup. So it's lock in two points for Minnesota. So it's 6-2, uh, to two, only four points separating these two teams after three jams. And now we, it looks like we have Cookie Rumble stepping up to jam for Detroit, number 333, against number 109, Psycho Novia, which I think is Spanish for crazy girlfriend. Aren't they all? <laughs> and they're all out here making left turns and knocking the snot out of each other. That's what brings us together. It's the craziness that binds us. All right, Cookie Rumble hits the pack first, dodges around Honeydew Felon. Oh, it looks like uh, yeah, it looks like Tiki Torches took a spell, but Cookie Rumble and Honeydew Felon going wide. Nice work by Kilimanjaro of Minnesota, number nine, taking care of that jammer in the tail blocker position, but fighting for her life. Sky Psycho Novia trying to get, trying to make any headway against Summer's Evil, and right behind Cookie Rumble though. Cookie Rumble taking the outside line, gets out of the pack first, but Psycho Novia right behind her just manages to just manages to outrace Summer's Evil at the last minute, so they're neck and neck, just a couple of strides behind uh, Cookie Rumble, Psycho Novia. So we've, we're probably going to see a – oh, she calls she calls it early. That's a safety. I call that a safety. You know, you just don't want the other jammer to pick up any points. Keep that, you know, keep that lead where it is. Smart play by Detroit. Yeah, you keep your head in the game like that whenever he gets a little farther along. That could really make a huge difference if you can keep that kind of a focus. Detroit 6, Minnesota Roller Girls with 2. And we have just under 25 minutes to go. Number 91 for Minnesota, Susie Smashbox, going against number 247 for Detroit. And that's going to be Boo Delivers. We, we may have to interview her just to ask, what the <laughs> F does that mean? What is going on with that name? It's interesting. I think it's probably booty. Uh, <laughs> the, the first two syllables run together, I think. Uh, but Susie Smashbox forced wide by Cookie Rumble. Cookie Rumble back in. Whoa, great move there by Minnesota's jammer. She hopped right to the inside, does a quick step, and she's immediately pulled halfway around the track already. Susie Smashbox. Wow, definitely, that is one of Valve's favorite skaters. And wow, just a tireless skater, very quick on her feet, and very small. She can get through some small, <laughs> some small holes that her defense can open up. But jammer here she takes. is on a scoring pass, moving in. Moving in. She's going to. Completely disappear in the pack. There she is. <laughs> okay, Tiki Torture giving her a whip, but she gets caught by Cookie Rumble and Cookie Rumble and Booty Livers moves into us uh, briefly and on the jammer defense. But now she is moving out. She just got out of her initial pass. That was a smart move by Booty Livers. She's actually trying to get her pack to reel back in Susie Smashbox. But Susie Smashbox able to smash her way, one might say, out of the pack. <laughs> and she's going to secure those points and pick up the lead for the first time for Minnesota. We've had some really fast jams here early on in the first period. We've got about 23 minutes to go. The score is extremely tight. It's a very fast pack. I mean, they're shaking and moving. They're hitting hard. When it comes time for these jammers to hit the hole, that's exactly what they're doing with no exaggeration. They're hitting it at full force, trying to make sure that they make the largest impact as possible. Number five, Sista Sitcha. And number 187, Lexi Cuter. Those are your jammers. Minnesota once again in the turquoise. <laughs> and in the black is Detroit. I believe that's French for turquoise. That is, yes, actually. <laughs> that sounds a little silly, so it might as well be French. Turquoise. <laughs> I think it's, I think it might be San Franciscan. Well, you know they're silly over there too. That's why I'm a huge fan of them. As opposed to New Jersey, uh, where, they, where they pronounce it turquoise. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to Mr. Rock. Don't yeah. tell him I said he's from Jersey. <laughs> Lexi Cuter forced wide by Booty Livers, but she comes back in. But Sister Slitcha able to get out of the pack first. Some great Detroit has a lock on the front. All four blockers locked in in the front of the pack and looks like Minnesota just a couple a bunch of fireflies <laughs> flying around the Detroit pack members but now now they're trying to assert some control trying to break up that coordination that the Detroit has but here comes Sister Slitchy in the confusion dodging around most of the Minnesota blockers unable to they I don't think they even see RSR but Venus thigh trap catches her at the front of the pack but forced to give ground at 20 feet and she's going to pick up five points Sister Slitcha for Detroit one thing you'd like to see is patience in your jammer, and we're talking about Sister Slitcher right now. 
she just waited for it, waited for it. She knew that the 20 feet area was going to end up coming because she counts on her blockers to be there for her. So far, Detroit's offensive and defensive head have been equally deadly and is working out very well for Detroit right now as they're over Minnesota 11-7. to Now, if you, if you were watching, Fatal Femme, number 46, and number 28, Racer McChaser, captain for Detroit, just had it. You just were shutting down. Lexi Cuter completely. They had her just tied up. They were uh, doing a front and side trap on the inside line of, of Lexi Cuter. Lexi Cuter unable to uh, was unable to get any assistance from her teammates because the other te- her other teammates were just completely in- completely engaged by the de- the other Detroit blockers. So I mean, really sh- able to shut down that jammer. And Sister Slitch is such an agile skater, able to get through again, and she's going to call off the jam this time. Only four points. Only four points, but I should say. Four freaking points, man. <laughs> That's four points, man. Right now it's 20 Detroit. Minnesota Roller Girls with seven. There's one thing you got to enjoy watching about Detroit's pack is every single skater has great ability to accelerate whenever they're ready to. The jammer starts to get to the front of the pack. They are really quick two to three step, and they're there already slowing her down trying to get the rest of the girls to catch up and consume the opposing team's jammer. Minnesota right now has... I thought they had someone in the penalty box. I'm going to shut my mouth and let Bulldog <laughs> run with it because apparently I need a new prescription. Yeah, so far, it's been a really clean game. I haven't seen a lot of uh, skaters going to the penalty box, but uh, we, we can see Detroit really came here, and they have a game plan, and they are sticking to it. You can see the, how they're working together. There's Racer McChaser already out of the pack. And uh, Detroit skaters just trapping Honeydew Felon at the back of the pack, along with Scarman Helector, the Minnesota jammer. Both of them trapped, and, and they're driving very slowly around the pack. Well, oh, bad news for Detroit. Racer McChaser heading to the penalty box. Scarman Helector on the power jam. And what do you do? What do you see? Detroit immediately kicks it into high gear. All four of their blockers starting to move it, but it looks like Polly Fester trapped behind a Minnesota wall. So that's going to that's gonna allow Minnesota to slow down the pack and force that 20-foot call if if Scarman Electric can make it. But look at that. Detroit immediately locking down three blockers all surrounding Scarman Electra and get, just taking over. Detroit is all over it. They're all about the swarm. They see an opportunity, and they all are chomping at the bit to get there. And when they do, it's almost, it's almost synchronized. I mean, they are very together. Their communication is not necessarily audible. It's like they've been trained to just be extremely aware of what's going on. When they see their own skater getting trapped, they do their best to move to the back and release her. When they see the jammer coming up, they do their best to take her down. Okay, they're actually good. I was I, no. That's a situation where you, it could go either way. They could call a, a, a low block on the on the on the blocking skater or a back block on the on the initiating skater in the back. This time they called Scarman Electra. She got a back block major heading to the penalty box, but it's not going to be a jammer switch up because Racer McChaser was already standing up and she comes out of the pack before Scarman Electra sits down. So Scarman Electra, Scarman Electra is going to be in there for a full minute. Racer McChaser now on the power jam. Racer McChaser doing a great job. She was already at the very front of the pack trying to race the clock, but Minnesota, they're no slackers either. They're doing a great job. They're also very aware of where Detroit is and they saw her coming to the front and decided to get three girls up there, slow it down. Down. The jam's over. It's time to reset the track with number 22 from Detroit. Effing That's going to be money. effing money, baby. Scarman Electra still in the penalty box as uh, still in the penalty box as jammer for Minnesota. You know we saw we saw Minnesota working really well together against Omaha. We're just really in control of the pack. Now we're seeing Detroit so far has had the edge in the pack, but I've seen some really good some good coordination, some good teamwork from Minnesota so far in this game. Minnesota's really started to bring it up here in the last few minutes. There's 18 minutes, 9 seconds to go in the first half. 20 for Detroit, 14 for Minnesota. And as you were saying earlier, I cannot agree with you more. Minnesota had a great game against Omaha. Omaha showed up, but Minnesota really had it together. They really have kept their focus, and they haven't let some of the big plays that Detroit has had so far get to them. They don't care. It's just jam to jam. They're like, fine, great, wonderful, congratulations. You had some great jams. Guess what? We've got a lot of game to go, and they're going to do their best to gain a lead. And I kind of hope they do, because I wouldn't mind saying it's time to drink for a lead change. <laughs> it's what motivates me. Well, you know, Minnesota has kept, has kept Detroit in, in reach. They haven't, let them, they haven't let them drive away. Now, by, the, by this time against Omaha, uh, Minnesota was, I think, I think, about 25 or 30 points ahead. But right now, both teams, this is basically a neck-and-neck neck game so far. Only six points separating. That is nothing. That is one 
That's one jam. One, you know, quick jam. Oh, yeah. You're going to see this for the rest of the tournament. Once the first few games of almost every tournament get out of the way, you see the points difference get tighter and tighter and tighter because the gameplay just gets closer and closer. The matchups are that way by elimination. And you're seeing a 20 to 14 game right now. And as you said earlier, someone had a 20 plus point lead at this point. So there's no telling what's going to go on. Evan is already at the front looking to get right on through. She does, and she's going to be your lead jammer for Detroit. And look at that. They've got Honeydew fell and trapped. By, oh, now she gets a – she gets a. I didn't catch the penalty, but she's going to the box. I don't know if it was a, for a fourth minor or a major penalty, but Honeydew fell and heads to the box. She was trapped behind the, def, the Detroit wall, So she, but then that releases, the, that releases the pack and allows Minnesota to dry and drive forward. But now instantly Detroit once again gets in front of the pack Gets in front of Kuchiku and Kilimanjaro, the only two blockers on the track for a... Uh, oh, that's interesting. Uh, oh, there we are. <laughs> Honeydew Felon Honeydew Felon and Tiki Torture. I was actually looking in the wrong spot. <laughs> I was like, they have two jammers? What? <laughs> uh, that's me flaking people. You know, dump truck, say something. Something. Hello. Uh, how, about, how about Power Jam? Even Garmin? though it's not one, it just works. <laughs> I don't know. That's all I got. Okay. No, it's... Uh, all right, uh, got it back together. Scarman Electric getting in there, but not able to put any points on the board. Looks like four points picked up by uh, by F and Money. Or am I just making stuff up? Usually you're making stuff up, I usually but this make time I think you're correct. 34-14, <laughs> Detroit out on top. We do have number five from Detroit on the this jammer line. Lit shot. That's right. We see her earlier. She had a great jam. We're going to have an official timeout and coming back up here in a minute. We'll get to that. We do want to thank a lot of our sponsors. Five on Five Magazine, the official magazine of the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. If you want to check out the finest publication out there, it's so great. WFTDA endorses it. Five on Five Mag dot com. And they are going to have. There are going to be running features on each of the regional tournaments and, the, and as well as the championship tournament. So I'm looking forward to my next issue. You know what I'm looking forward to? I'm looking forward to my friend Wolfie Whistle coming to championships from Australia. I know for a fact that they are still up in Adelaide. The Adelaideans are continuing to prove how dedicated they are to even just watching the games. They're up at 7.30 in the morning. They've been watching this all day long. We appreciate their support, and I can't wait to see you guys soon. Susie Smashbox getting to the front of the pack and forcing that 20-foot call, and she's going to get lead jammer for Minnesota, so coming out fighting. Susie Smashbox, uh, you know, that there's a reason why Val loved that skater, but there's Sista Slitcha, also one of the finest jammers in the uh, in the North Central region, uh, in my opinion, uh, and also in my derby wife's opinion. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Smashbox coming through, going against the front three of Detroit. She saw what was coming. And what was coming was Detroit's jammer, so she calls it off real quick and, and she can't get a little bit of a points difference. And that was perfect execution. She, I mean, she kind of lucked out because Sister Slitcher was fighting and all, all was right there about to score some points, but she ended up getting a 4-0 to zero decision, which is exactly what you want to see in that hit it and quit it situation. That is the best result you can get. Oh, yeah. On the jammer line now for Minnesota, 187 Lexi Cuter. And number 247, Boo Delivers. For Detroit in that, the black. That just makes me giggle every time because I really don't know where to go with that. And I'm not sure if it's acceptable for broadcasting. <laughs> well, it's, Neither am I, but they still let me on uh, every it's, once it's in a while. It's right, okay, the internet, man. Booty Livers finds an open outside line. Uh, Detroit, The Detroit pack forcing that inside line to uh, all of the packs, uh, the entire pack to the inside, opens up that outside line for Booty Livers, picks up lead jammer. And Lexi Cuter now trying to get past Racer McChaser and Spanish Assassin with the two wall at the front. Bruzy Sue coming in to, to she's just sapping. I, I like to use that word, but not everybody knows what that means. That was up. It's basically a troop that just com comes in to just weaken your opponent. You just hit him, hit him, hit him, and don't let him rest. That's oh, what's yeah. sapping. It saps the enemy's strength, and mm -hmm. that's uh, that's kind of what that tail blocker position does. Oh, yeah, the more you hit them, the more you wear them down, the more you, you gain their attention, which can be a huge advantage, especially when you have four of the girls on your team try and take advantage of such a situation. Detroit going to call off the jam right there. Looks like she pulled off a four-point pass before that jam ended. Just under 14 minutes now, 38 Detroit, 18 Minnesota. All right, now Detroit has managed to open up a little bit of a gap now, but we've got... Uh uh, we've got one blocker in, in the penalty box for each team, but they're both standing up. That's Polly Fester, number 100 for Detroit in the penalty box, and Coochie Coo, team captain, number number 333 for Minnesota. So we have three-on-three three very briefly in the pack, 
to start out. And it looks like Cookie Rumble jamming for Detroit. Scarman Electra jamming for Minnesota. Detroit off the line, ready to go. Minnesota, a little hesitant. They wanted to wait for their skater to go ahead and join the pack. Everybody's underway. Detroit's jammer. Goodness gracious, is that number 333? Cookie Rumble. And she Cookie came Rumble. right through there, not afraid to get hit or to give one her own. She is, you know, I, I see her block as often as I see her jam, or more often than I see her jam, actually. She's always in there, she, so a tough blocker. But look at that. She goes to the penalty box. She's, that's going to be a Scarman Electra on the power jam. Coochie Koo back in the penalty box. And I think that's the third or fourth time I've seen her in this period. You really got to be careful. You know, the penalties is exactly what's going to kill you. Whenever you have two leagues like this that are so evenly matched, you get somebody that can't stay out of the box, and that's where the big difference is going to be made. But Scarman Electra facing a tough opposition. L Eliminator and Racer McChaser, along with Bruzy Sue at the front of the pack. Polly Fester in there, but <laughs> Honeydew Felon not letting... A, she's just taking care of Polly Fester, but that's okay for Detroit. Detroit's got three blockers in the front, but there it is. Polly oh. Fester trapped in the in the goat pen of Minnesota. That's Honeydew, Honeydew Felon, Citizen Payne, and, uh, and ooh, is that... Uh, that is <laughs> Tara Skates off. Trapping Polly Fester at the back of the pack and opening up that opening up that opportunity for Scarman Electra, but Scarman Electra going to the penalty box, and that's going to be a jammer switch out. Cookie Rumble, but I think Cookie Rumble already served most of her minute, so that's going to be a long, uh, a long shortened penalty. Looks like Scarman Electra kind of put her hand over her mouth right when she says, "She's like, I know that's my bad. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go sit down." Well, I think that was that was just a little uh, a little error on her part because it looked like her pack did exactly the right thing. They trapped Polly Fester and, and allowed her that twenty foot gap so that she could get that free pass. But she just made a little technical error, and that's all it takes to get sent to the penalty box and put the other team on the power jam. Great job there by Coochie Koo and friends, making sure that they stopped Detroit's jammer in her tracks exactly where they needed to do. It was getting close to the end of the jam. It looked like Detroit was again starting to gain some more momentum, especially it being a power jam. you got to give some big ups to Minnesota. It's only a 20-point difference right now. And, well, now I'm a liar. Now it's 42 well, to 18. Right. There's not much more. That's right. The, the jam referee for Detroit was looking to, looking to see who was in the penalty box. And it looks like she she did pick up four points, and uh, they're actually that's a full uh, penalty box for Minnesota. Two blockers and the and the jammer, Scarman Hector, the jammer, Honeydew Felon, and I believe that is Tara Skates off in the penalty box as blockers for Minnesota. So they're going to be starting out with only two on the track. Forty-two to eighteen, Detroit on top. We have a timeout, Minnesota Roller Girls, and just under or just over, excuse me, eleven minutes to go. Is your Derby League experiencing growing pains? Have Derby Will Travel can help. Get a free consultation at HaveDerbyWillTravel.com. Sin City, uh, <laughs> Sin City Skates, the original Derby-owned skate shop, is also DNN's very first sponsor ever. Buy skates from a skater at SinCitySkates.com. Now, there are some pretty great skaters when you have Ivana Spankett and when you have Trish that is. Yeah, they might know just a little bit about how this game is played and, and what equipment will help you play it better. Ivana is actually here as kind of the crew. If you have any equipment problems and you're here to game, you look for a Sin City Skates rep, and they'll go over and help you tune your equipment if you don't already have that personnel. Right now, it looks like Effen's lined up to start this in a power jam for Detroit. Oh, it looks like uh, it looks like I said earlier that there were two blockers in the penalty box, but all, now there's only one. So there may have been some there may have been some minor confusion, which happens sometimes, especially with regards to fourth minor and the skater just uh, get, you, they think they're getting sent off the track. Wilson, I, I'm not sure that that's what happened, but it looks like Minnesota is going to be able to field three blockers to start this jam. But it is on the power jam. Oh, and Racer McChaser in the penalty box as well as a blocker. So it is three on three in the pack and. F and money stalking the Minnesota Minnesota blockers at the front. Looks like we have Tiki Torture, Venus Fly Trap, wow. Venus Thigh Trap, and uh, Kilimanjaro at the in the in the jam for Minnesota. Nice shoulder check from Kilimanjaro, taking F and money all the way to the outside of turn three, taking her down. <laughs> so that's gonna that costs her half a lap. Kilimanjaro gets a piece of F and money again, but this time F and money get dodges around, and Venus Thigh Trap though catches her at the front of the pack. Stops her in her tracks, goes all the way down to one knee briefly, but uh, once again we've got Tiki Torture and, and Venus Thigh Trap at the front with the two wall on Evan Money and Evan Money having a lot of trouble. Looks like Racer McChaser out of the penalty box back in and now trying to trying to break up that two wall. But there's Tiki Torture. Tiki Torture gets position briefly on Evan Money, but Evan Money able to outrace her, gets out of the pack for lead jammer. 
Effort Money really fighting hard. Minnesota making her do so. Minnesota's all over this game. They know what's going on. They're definitely in it. Their heads are focused. They're bearing down. They're making uh, Effort Money earn every single point that she gets. Doing a great job. Evan Money now in the middle of the pack. Looking to go to the outside. Race around number nine from Minnesota. Seeing if she can make it up through. Getting some help there from her Detroit ladies. Trying to get a nice little hip whip there. But Minnesota is keeping the speed up. And wow, we have another jammer takedown. That's the second yeah. time she went down in this jam. Same and skater again, that, too. Yeah, same skater. She's got her number. She's got her figured out. And she lost a half of a lap and that was the end of the jam. We have just under 10 minutes to go. 45 Detroit. 18 Minnesota. That was great work by Kilimanjaro, number nine for Minnesota. She uh, took a, two jammer takedowns. I got to give her credit for uh, both shoulder checks, but she dis but and the second one she heads to the penalty box. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't see the call on that what the technical penalty was, but uh, it was probably it was I'm get I, you know what I, I whatever it was a, it was a penalty that got her sent to the box and she so she loses a minute. Susie Smashbox going against Sister Slitcher for Detroit. Wow, Susie Smashbox comes in the inside really quick, gets to the front. She's got no help at all, and that turned into an advantage for number five from Detroit. Sister getting Slitcher. through, Sister Slitcha. Sister Slitcha is the lead jammer, but Susie Smashbox breaks out of the pack finally. But and actually, she didn't lose that much ground to Sister Slitcha. The pack moving very quickly. Three on two right now in favor of Detroit. Whoa, Sister Slitcher comes in and slams into the back of Voodoo Prodigy, and she is going to get a major back block for that one. I got to tell you, that was that was a pretty blatant call. A Voodoo Prodigy actually slow to get up, but it looks like she's she's okay now. She was uh, she was shaking it off, but she's back in the pack, and now we've got the Power Jam Susie Smashbox, but bro, that's Cookie Rumble with positional block and uh, Fatal Femme. But Susie Smashbox able to dodge around both of them, and she gets out of the pack, picks up five points for Minnesota. And Minnesota coming back a little bit. They're, they are they do have a pretty big deficit right now, but Minnesota, this is a big opportunity. Susie Smashbox looks like she's going. Yo, oh, she is not calling off. She was not the lead jammer. She was not the lead jammer. That was a that's an illegal procedure minor that gets she gets called on. And we are going to have a full two minute jam. We are definitely going to have a full two minute jam. It's 46 Detroit, 23 Minnesota. Minnesota. I, let's talk about how fast these packs have been. It has not slowed down except for just a few moments to try and throw the other team off of their rhythm. It hasn't worked. Detroit's still turning and burning. Minnesota right behind them doing the same thing. Momentum seems to be on both leagues' sides, and you just got to wait to see how it's going to fold out. No longer a power jam. Uh, Sister Slitcha is just now getting back out there. And if you look what, what's happening, Detroit, uh, notice, knowing they're on the power kill, they're pu pushing to the front of the pack, and of course Minnesota wants to peel off just one skater trapper in the pack and force that 20-foot call and pick up those points. But every single time they try and catch a skater, Detroit just Im immediately, like a, like a pack, like a swarm, or like a, a hive mind, they just immediately all start accelerating just uh, just that quickly, and they are all just very adept skaters. And uh, Minnesota, I, I, I got to say, Minnesota was not working so well together. I kept on seeing one skater dart ahead to try and slow down one skater and reel her in, but the, she wasn't getting a heck of a lot of support from her teammates in the pack. So, uh, so I think Detroit definitely won that jam in the pack. But we've got uh, 48 to 24, Detroit exactly doubling the score. And here comes Racer McChaser jamming for Detroit. Go and it uh, looks like Lexi Cuter jamming for Minnesota. Race to make Chaser is such a smooth skater. You cannot tell how fast she's going because it doesn't look like she's moving her feet that fast. But there's so much power in that woman to where she does not have to quick step to make a high speed move. All she has to do is focus, keep her head down, and just power right on through. And that's what she does best. And Racer McChaser forced wide, but she is in on a scoring pass. Lexicutor finally getting out of the back on her initial pass. She's got to make it all the way around to start scoring. And there was Racer McChaser. Pulls that 20 foot, gets past Tara. Tara skates off, and she's going to call off that jam before Lexi Cuter can get in. Picks up four points to zero. So another plus four decision for Detroit. Right now it's 52 Detroit, 24 for Minnesota. About five and a half minutes to go. We do want to thank some of our great sponsors like Cruise Skate Shop, Derby owned in San Francisco. They have a new location in Sacramento that opens September 17th. Check them out if you're in the area, and if not, you can go online to cruiseskateshops.com. That's C-R-U-Z skateshop.com. Sorry, Cruise Skate Shop, I believe they're both a, both a skating, uh, as in quads and inline skates, and also skateboarding. So they are kind of a cross-venture. 
They're, that, they're, they're full word? service. That's full service. I've been known wheels. to be that way as well, but usually only after an after party. Wow, what all a right. great... You can hear the crowd really getting into this, and not all of them are from Minnesota. There's a lot of love going towards Minnesota from their fellow uh, skaters. Now, they're they're getting a lot... Of, this jammer is getting a lot of love from the Matt Roland Dolls because Jukebox, number 818, the jammer from Minnesota in this jam, she is a former Matt Roland Dolls skater, so she comes in and gets that lead jammer, and her, and her former teammates just go crazy, and there she goes. She gets that hit it and quit it, picks up that maximum plus four decision, four to zero, and Boo delivers, unable to just barely miss getting any points on that one. Plus four, Minnesota. Jukebox, one of those skaters, is kind of like a firecracker. If you put it in your hand and close it, you're probably going to lose a finger or two. Your, you really be, your, your wife will be opening your ketchup bottle. <laughs> That's exactly right. I have a wife? Man, I was <laughs> drunk. RollerCon was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. You should check it out. From what I'm told, the pictures look great. <laughs> Sister Slitcha jamming for Detroit going against Psycho Novia. Psycho Novia number 109 for Minnesota. Now, Sister Slitcha held up in the back by Tiki Torture and Honeydew Felon. Psycho Novia gets to the front, but Polly Fester slams the door shut. But there she goes. She gets a hip whip off of uh, off of Co- Coochie Coo number 333 for Minnesota. And Psycho Novia out of the pack for lead jammer. So for a second jam in a row, Minnesota has the advantage. So Detroit a little uh, in a kerfuffle. <laughs> no, no. I don't think that's going to catch on. I, for some reason, I don't think that's going to catch on as a derby turn. It's not going to go you through. She had her line of three controlling that inside spot, and they just barely creep to the outside, opening up just enough of a gap to get her through and get a grand slam for Minnesota. All right, we're seeing some nice moves from Sister Slitcha, but Tiki Torture and Coochie Coo able to keep position. Finally forced to give ground, at, uh, give way at the at 20 feet because Honeydew Felon had been trapped by the pack. So once again, Sister Slitcha able to get through only with the help of the pack. Well coordinated. And Psycho Novia gets into the pack, though, and picks up two more points. I think on top of that, I think uh, she got five points on that first pass. Total of seven on that on that one. Zero points picked up by Sister Slitcha. I tell you what, we can talk about Minnesota a little bit more. If you want to check out some uh, some Minneapolis stuff over there, we do have Derby for All. Derby owned in Minneapolis and ready to serve you online at derbyforall.com. That's Derby, the number four, all.com. All right, looks like we have, is that effing money? That is effing money. That is effing money. And guess who else? Susie Smashbox. Susie wow. Smashbox for Minnesota. Once again, Minnesota in the, in the turquoise and <laughs> Detroit in the black. Susie Smashbox, did you see that? That was a, that looked like it was. I, I was half expecting to see an elbow called, and possibly even an elbow to the head. It was. It looked very close, but I only caught it out of the corner of my eye. But nevertheless, I don't think any penalty was called, so it was a clean hit. Susie Smashbox getting out of the pack, and F and Money though out of the pack first for lead jammer. Both jammers getting around, but Susie Smashbox has about a quarter lap to make up, and F and Money not slowing down for anything. F and Money already in the middle of the pack goes to the outside in turn three, gets pushed out of bounds. This Diamond is a big rock. moment for Minnesota. Oh, but it looks like Smashbox went down. It looks like her leg was twisting a little bit, but I think she's going to be all right. She's getting back up to her feet. Go to the side of the track, getting some love from everyone here at North Central's in Green Bay. Both jammers getting uh, some tough hits. Diamond Ruff doing the honors on uh, on effing money, and it looked like Spanish Assassin, number 223 for Detroit, taking down Susie Smashbox. So both jammers have, may have something to regret on that last jam. I don't think any points were scored either. Sometimes a, a little patience goes a long way. <laughs> Looks well, like we have number 28 for Detroit. Number 28 is Racer McChaser, team captain. Uh, but, oh, you know what? It looks like Susie Smashbox actually took the penalty against... Uh, so she must have... It must have been a, a, a hit on Spanish Assassin, but Spanish Assassin like a brick wall and Susie Smashbox in the box. So we've got Racer McChaser coming to get into the front. Coochie Coo has to... No, she gets a piece of her, and then Diamond Ruff also at the front gets a piece of her as well. But I, I think bo- I think Diamond Ruff actually had to give ground. Racer McChaser getting out. Great pack work by Detroit. And now look at that. They're lagging back, pulling back, but, the, but Minnesota now trying to... Trying to stay in front and prevent Racer McChaser, but there she goes, pours on the speed out of nowhere. That was a voodoo prodigy, gets a little piece of her, and now Racer McChaser looked like she wanted revenge. Yeah. Got, got, got right back at voodoo prodigy, but the, now the pack has picked up speed. Racer McChaser at the back of the pack, so nice work so far by Minnesota on this power kill. And Goodness. we've got, oh, Kilimanjaro comes in with a big shoulder check, but Racer McChaser just brushes it off. 
And Voodoo Prodigy, again, a glancing blow. And just now, Racer makes Racer ducking underneath Diamond Ruff and getting out of the pack. Five points picked up by, by uh, Detroit. But Susie Smashbox out of the pack, gets through her initial pass. She started in the penalty box. So she, that was her initial pass. And Racer McChaser, though, in in the in control with lead jammer, comes around wide. Kilimanjaro, a very tough shoulder check. I've, I've seen so many shoulder checks coming from Kilimanjaro that have just been quite a, a lot of them about 75% effectiveness with a just devastating effect, in fact. But held to the inside and a wide open outside lane. Racer McChaser able to get through, gets that hit it and quit it, and she calls off the jam. Detroit with 60 points, Minnesota with 37. We can talk about Racer McChaser a bit. We are at halftime, and I guess uh, one thing one thing that you have when you have a jammer that's built like a blocker like that, and she's as fast as almost any jammer you're going to find, she's deadly. You can hit I her think, all you want, but it's really not going to do a whole lot. I think you're, you were talking about a blocker in football, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. When you have a right no, guard on roller yeah. skates. <laughs> all right. My name is Dump Truck. And this is Bulldog. And we're going to give you a little bit of a break. Cadillac of charcoal grill burger. 
just sounds really good. I'm not even going to say anything more about it. But uh, Rolls is open until 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday night. Midnight on Sunday. So hurry up. So been there on the west side of Lambeau Field. Off of the South Ridge Road. I have Scott in the red shirt for the announcer table, please. Scott in the red shirt for the announcer table, please. You have a moment for on your kid. Take your time.
Just under a minute remaining until the second half of this Minnesota versus Detroit battle again. We'll see how effective the speeches, the coaching speeches were in the uh, in the locker room at halftime. Will they be a Herb Brooks level speech that follows the USA people special in nineteen eighty? All I can tell you is that Minnesota All right. All right, we are back here in Green Bay, Wisconsin at the North Central Regional Tournament. Right now, it is Detroit 60 over Minnesota Roller Girls 37. And this broadcast has been brought to you by Hinkley Design and Production. Without them, this would not be going down. You can not only watch this streaming live today on DerbyNewsNetwork.com as you are doing this moment, but you can also purchase a DVD after the tournament where, unfortunately for you, the commentary is included. <laughs> but we like it. Yeah, you're stuck with us. <laughs> well, we can get ready for the Mad Rolling Dolls fan club to start cheering again. We've got Jukebox, number A18 for Minnesota, jamming against Sista Slitcha for Detroit. Detroit in black, Minnesota in turquoise. Turquoise. <laughs> well, we were arguing earlier whether it was teal or turquoise. I'm going to go with turquoise. Yeah, It yeah. kind of rolls off the tongue. And I think I think teal would be a little bit more shimmery. You mm, know? That's true. Well, you know, then it could almost be periwinkle, really. <laughs> and there's there's so many options. It's just it's out of control. It's a rainbow of choices. Goodness, it's, it's a plethora, if you will. <laughs> yeah, we, we it's a kaleidoscope of jerseys out here. All right, both jammers underway. As is the pack. This pack is a little bit slower to start. We'll see if the pace changes. Thus far, we've seen some extremely fast pack play and obviously some extremely fast jammers. That's Jukebox breaking out first. He gets around fem, uh, Fatal Femme. <laughs> Not Femme Fatale. That's all you know. Uh, but we, she, gets, she gets around, picks up lead jammer. That's uh, Sister Slitcher getting around uh, Diamond Rough, and she gets out of the pack as well, but about a half a lap behind Jukebox. Oh, no, she doesn't get out of the pack. Oh. Heading to the penalty box. Heading to the penalty box, that's going to put Jukebox on the power jam. Diamond Rough also into the penalty box, but we've got uh, Minnesota on the power jam, and there he goes. D Detroit immediately kicks in into high gear. Hey, you know what i tell you, the pace of these packs have been so fast, you've got to wonder, what have they been training at altitude? Have I missed something? Because I live at altitude, and I haven't seen these girls training. I, have, I feel like I've missed the boat. Right now, it looks like jukebox right in the middle of the mix of the deadly Detroit pack. They have been relentless, they have been fast, and they have been in control, but the lead is not that great where they can't overcome. 60 points for Detroit, and now 40 points for Minnesota. We all know this is still anyone's game. That's right, jukebox able to pick up three points. See, so even though she didn't get out of the pack, and Detroit did a great job holding her back and preventing, the, preventing any of their skaters from getting trapped behind the Minnesota pack, she did pick up three points, so well done by Jukebox. And here comes Lexi Cuter, still on the power jam. Wait for it. There it goes. Oh, my goodness. That was, a, <laughs> <laughs> that was so exciting. Oh, riveting. <laughs> Sister Slitch is still in the penalty box as jammer for Detroit. Uh, but it's four on three advantage in the pack. And But Cookie Rumble now trapped in the back of, but in the Minnesota goat pen. But she breaks free before Lexi Cuter can get out. And so the Detroit pack, that's Ghetto Barbie comes in with a shoulder check, holding back, and now Cookie Rumble and Ghetto Barbie have position on Lexi Cuter. Tell you what, that pack up front with Ghetto Barbie, I mean, she hit her three times within two turns and went back for some more and for some more. If you have a repeat offender like that, as I like to say, you have a blocker that is on your team and you want to make sure she stays on the track as much as possible. She's out there again, about to take on the jammer one more time. And Ghetto Barbie just looking at her, going, come on. Get some. Work it out. Cookie Rumble and Ghetto Barbie with the two wall. But now Lexicutor pours on the speed, gets in between her, gets in between those two blockers and gets out of the pack. But she is she is not going to pick up lead jammer. And now Sista Slitcha out of the penalty box. <laughs> nice work by nice work by Cookie Rumble. That, no, that was Bruzy Sue taking Diamond Ruff out and allowing Sista Slitcha to get back in. But otherwise, Sista Slitcha would have had the backpedal. 
Looks like we had some hitting out of bounds there by number 303. That is Bruce, was it Bruce Bruzy Sue? Sue. Bruzy Sue. I can't read. It's in English. <laughs> Bruzy Sue heading to the penalty box. Was executor able to get out of the penalty, out of the pack, and she picks up five points for Minnesota. Sister Slitch is still stuck behind a Minnesota two wall at the back of the pack. Kilimanjaro and Bru- Diamond Ruff. And here comes here comes the executor on a second Whoa. scoring pass, and this time catches the Detroit defense off guard. Another five points for Minnesota. I tell you, Bulldog, it looks like something has really clicked in Minnesota. They're really starting to hunker down, get in the trenches, and they're really starting to have some synchronicity there and, and within that team. And having a, a, a score that is now so close. It is 26 minutes, 24 seconds to go. The jam has just ended, and it looks like we're going to be somewhere around 60 to 50. Detroit still on top, but we'll see here in a moment and get a new score update. We'll see. We're, I think she might have put uh, some more points on the board there. That's going to only seven points, three more points picked up by Lexi Cuter, a 13-point jam, and that puts that puts Minnesota right back into the game to come out fighting in the second half, and this is what happens. And now we're going to be starting off with a power jam with Jukebox on the line for Minnesota. Uh, you know their bench coach needs to get, get some big ups there. Right now, it looks like we're going to go to an official timeout. But Minnesota, man, I tell you, that's the last thing they want. They don't want the, the crowd to calm down because they are starting to get loud for Minnesota and Jukebox. And it's one of those things where like, no, let's keep it going. Keep the momentum going. Keep it flowing. Keep it feeling good. And they are really able to convert on these power jams. This is the third jam of the second half. And Sista Slitch is the, so far the only jammer that Detroit's been able to field because she's been in the penalty box at the end of the jam for the last two jams in a row. You know, these penalties, we say it over and over again. That's probably because, I don't know, it's true. If you can't keep your skaters out of the box, they just can't be effective on the track. It makes it so easy for the point difference to get out of hand because as you pass the first opponent, you automatically get those. Okay, we did, we did have a score adjustment. Only one point picked up on it, so only 11 points scoring pass. But still, only nine points. They were actually behind by 28 points at one point in the second half, late in the second half, and already nine points only so, stopping them. And on another power jam, here comes Jukebox. Cutting to the inside around wow. a, a minimal pack. And what, what do you think of that? Goodness, I, I think it not only is it the world's smallest pack, but it's the world's most explosive skater. Uh, Jukebox taking advantage of this two-on-two, two, and she's having some great help there, trying to get a shirt with there, moving forward. No engagement there, moves right on through, picks up, I believe, five points. And that was Citizen Payne holding back Bruzy Sue, and that was and that split the pack. And that gave that gave Jukebox that wide opening, and she's going to pick up five more points, and that's going to bring it to four points for Minnesota. And Susie and Sister Slish is still in the penalty box for Detroit, just looking on helplessly. Yeah, she's she's just now starting to stand up, so she's getting ready to get ready to get ready to rejoin <laughs> the action and try and stop the bleeding. All right, but here it is, Jukebox on a second scoring pass already on this power jam, and they're. And Sister Slitcher coming out, but she has to backpedal quite a bit just to get behind the pack. There goes uh, there goes Bruzy Sue heading to the penalty box. So it's going to be two, still only two blockers on the track for Detroit. And it looks like we've got another Grand Slam. Jukebox being the one in charge right now. At this moment, it is 61 to 60. Minnesota Roller Girls over Detroit. Drink up and be somebody, baby. <laughs> Look at that is what you call a score change. And with a final hit it and quit it, she's going to call off that jam, protect those points, and three more points, a huge jam by Jukebox, and the, and the Mad Rolling Dolls go wild. I tell you what, at this moment, this entire room really seems to be getting behind Minnesota. It is extremely exciting to watch this go on. I know the folks at home are on the edge of your seat, and you're either going, what is going on, or, oh my goodness, should I be taking notes? Timeout called by Detroit, and you know, there's a very good time to be taking their first timeout. So both teams are still with two timeouts left after this time it's, oh, it's over. And uh, But four points ahead, Minnesota coming back from a huge, a pretty big deficit, and now back in, the, in, com- in command, Minnesota four points ahead. All right, it's 60 Detroit, 64 Minnesota, 24 minutes, 9 seconds to go. We do want to thank some more of our sponsors, Rockstar Skates, Derby owned in St. Louis. Get free shipping on any order over $50 this weekend, so jump on it at rockstarskates.com and enter the coupon code DNN. All right, I can't tell you, coming in at seed number 7, and they're playing right now the seed number 2 seed, Detroit. So this 
if Minnesota can pull this off, this would be a huge upset for the North Central region. They're, they're definitely starting to make news one jam at a time. If Minnesota comes on top and has this great upset, that totally throws things out of whack, possibly. We still have a lot of this weekend to go, but this is one of those where it's like, well, you know, everything changed whenever Minnesota did this. We're not going to do any predictions yet. We still have 24 minutes to go. All right, we've got Effin Money, jamming for, jamming for Detroit, number 22. And we've got Psycho Novia jamming for Minnesota. But both jammers getting beaten up. And Effin Money completely trapped by the Minnesota defense. And Psycho Novia breaks out, breaks through this micro. Uh, the only two blockers on the track for Detroit. And there goes Psycho Novia. She's the lead jammer. She's blowing kisses as she goes by, breaks out to the pack. It's not, the to celebrate it's not time to celebrate, but man, I tell you, if it feels good, it just feels good. She gets through quick and in a hurry. That is a grand time for Minnesota. Effin, Effin Money, I have lost track of her. Where in the world did she go? Oh, she's uh, actually she's being seen by the medics. So we've got the oh, we've wow. got the Detroit Jammer uh, in turn two. So she's. It looks like uh, they may have called off the jam for that injury. But Evan Money looks like she's skating back to the bunch. Uh, maybe just got the wind knocked out of her. We'll see. She's back up on her feet, and she's already over to the bench pretty quick. You know, when you get these big hits, you really do want to be careful. There's all sorts of things that can happen that don't feel urgent at the moment, but they really do end up being something severe. So I'm glad that she has her mind about her nose when to take a break for a second. Get the medical attention that's needed. We we'll get the track reset and keep on moving down the road. All right, but but I I, I didn't I believe they called off that jam due to that injury. I don't know if uh, I don't know if uh, Minnesota actually called off the jam. I believe they were lead jammer, but uh, but as a technical matter, if if they did call off the jam for F and money, that means she has to sit out for three jams. All right, we are in the middle of the official timeout. We do want to thank Fast Girl Skates. Go to fastgirlskates.com and check out all the best roller derby equipment that doesn't suck. Fastgirlskates.com, a strong supporter of the Derby News Network, and we love them for it. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's right. You can go in and talk to Wiley Peyote and La, La Petite Mort, both Rat City Roller Girl skaters. Uh, Wiley Peyote on the All-Star team. And, uh, you know, it's great to just walk in and uh, just chat. Uh, they, they love it. They, they love talking about derby. They love talking about gear. They love to sell you gear. And they really know their business. So, I mean, I, I, I highly recommend just go to Fast Girl Skate, even if you just go to browse. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with window shopping. I do it every day. <laughs> I love windows. And shopping. Shopping is great. <laughs> Periwinkle. Woo! Susie Smashbox, number 91, for Minnesota on the jammer line. And Cookie Rumble jamming for Detroit. And both jammers on the starting out on the track, I think, for the first time in this, in this no, I think possibly the last jam, they might have both been on the track. But it was, oh, we were so excited over, the, over that lead him. change. 72, though. Now, actually, Minnesota is extending that lead. Minnesota starting to take the bull by the horns. Get through. Smashbox is going, what's going on? I need to get through. She does. She's the lead jammer. And look at this. The Minnesota pack on fire, taking Cookie Rumble down in turn two, and they still have control. Now now Diamond Ruff forced out of bounds, allowing Cookie Rumble to proceed forward. But now she's still got Tiki Torture to, to contend with, and Tiki Torture comes in. Oh, dodges behind her, but there's Susie Smashbox on her first scoring pass. Susie Smashbox coming up through the rear, getting some assistance there from her blockers. That's going to be number 1837, Diamond Ruff, bringing up the front. And it looks like Smashbox is going to try and get through. Does it, so she calls it. And we're going to see what kind of point change we have now. 22 minutes, 16 seconds to go. Two timeouts apiece still. And you can almost guarantee they're probably going to use those. With this kind of a pace game, with this kind of an energy and a 15-point lead with Minnesota now, they're going to utilize those those timeouts. They want to make sure that they that they uh, capitalize on the time they have left in the second period. But so far, Minnesota has dominated this first 10 minutes of the second half. They came out swinging, came back from, a, I think it was close to a 20-point deficit. I don't remember the exact score. Uh, do you remember the score at the halftime? I do not. I don't remember my name half the time. <laughs> well... <laughs> I can sympathize with you there, Bulldog, <laughs> Bull Truck. <laughs> All right, that's Polly Fester jamming for the first time for Detroit, and she breaks out first for a lead jammer. Now we've got Lexi Cuter stuck at the back of the back, a little bit of a pileup going into turn one. I think that was Booty Livers <laughs> mixed up with two <laughs> Minnesota blockers. All right, Polly Fester moving into, into scoring position. Lexi Cuter getting out of the pack on her initial pass. 
So it's so Polly Fester not in position for that jammer lap point, but she is in control, and there she goes calling off that jam. And we're going to see how many points. Three points, but there's no points picked up by Minnesota. So it's going to be a plus three, bringing the difference to 12 points. Boy, that's got to be a hard pack to get through. Once you see Detroit's jammer hit the back of the pack, it goes nuts. It looks like ants all over a sucker on the sidewalk. They are just <laughs> all over the place. They're getting it. They're swarming it. They're keeping them guessing. And I think that may be part of their strategy. It's like, you know, let's keep moving. Keep moving. Go around. Don't rest on your laurels. Let's keep this game going. Let's try and get their heads out of it a little bit. And keep in mind, they've been going for 40 minutes so far. The clock just hitting the 20-minute mark, and they, they have been keeping up the pace this entire time. So great conditioning that we, that we, that we wouldn't have seen two years ago. Jammer but, takedown inside turn four. F and Money trying to get through the pack for Detroit. And it's jukebox again for Minnesota, but this time not gliding through the pack quite as easily. As soon as I say it, she gets to the front. Polly Fesser and, and Racer McChaser, though, have the two all at the front. And do ducking and dodging the jukebox breaks out for the jammer. Man, I tell you what, Detroit doing the same thing Minnesota's been doing. These Both of these packs, I mean, we'll just break it down right here for you. These are two very close match teams. This is the kind of game that you come to these regional tournaments to watch, period. F and Money still at the back of the pack, and Jukebox with a box of ju whole box of jukes. I think <laughs> a, and, a, and a little extra can on the side. Coming out of all the way through the pack and just dodges right around Polly Fesser. Racer McChaser heading to the penalty box. F and Money, the jammer for Detroit, getting out of the pack just ahead of Jukebox. And so keeping Jukebox at only four points, Jukebox calls off the jam before F and Money can hit the pack, and that's going to be a plus four for Minnesota. And Minnesota just keeping up the momentum. Do you think we could call that a box of Jukes with a whoop-ass sidecar? <laughs> I, I was been holding on to that one for a little bit. I liked it. It was good. It tastes like chicken. I like it. 79, Minnesota. Detroit, 63. Whoever uh, is texting or Twittering Mr. John Maddening, thinking that he's on the broadcast and someone keeps calling him Dump Truck, he's on the live call, son. This is Dump Truck and Bulldog, not Bob Dog. But I think I think Detroit <laughs> is still reeling from that from that onslaught from Minnesota. And here we go. That's Le no, that's Psycho Novia jamming for Minnesota, going against Booty Livers for Detroit. Booty, and so it looks like Detroit trying out some some new jammers, uh, some fresh jammers in this one. But it's, so far it hasn't been working out so well for him. Psycho Novia coming out first for lead jammer. Psycho Novia, she really is a machine. You can see her. Looking for the pack play when she's halfway around the track. She knows that there are some trailing Detroit skaters back here, including the jammer who's now playing defense. But she's all right with it. She's an athlete. She's a little smaller, but she's extremely fleet of foot. So she has no problem getting around the track in a hurry and getting through. A psycho Nobia. That, speaking of jammer, that was Jammer D, and that was Booty Livers taking down Psycho Nobia and holding her. Now, now they're actually well behind the pack. Psycho Nobia is still on that scoring pass. Booty Livers has yet to get out of the pack so far in this jam. Now dodging around Booty Livers, Psycho Novia gets into the pack, but there's Racer McJay, no, sorry, F Fatal Femme and Bruzy Sue forming the two wall at the front. You know, Detroit, even with only two women up front, have been extremely productive. Right there, that's what you want to see. Turn three, Jammer takedown. I have not seen her recover yet. This may not be a good deal. She's gone down in front of the announcer's table and the NSO's table. And it looks like everybody's going to be taking a knee. But she's I, like, I don't care. My name is Psycho Novia, dog. I'm up, and it's time to move it and do it. She I'm, did get up a little bit slow. Looks like she's favoring that right leg. Favoring that right leg, but I don't believe that. I'm pretty sure that she called off the jam. She was the lead jammer, and she, and obviously she uh, she got up fairly quickly. But that, that was a big hit. Did you see that? That was, uh, that was Fatal Femme taking Bruzy Sue and using her as a as a ammunition <laughs> as ordinance and just pushing her across the track and taking psycho <laughs> a psycho novia by surprise and taking her all the way into the into the announcer booth that was a tough hit you know i mean that I'm was not, very tough I, I, I don't i you know i i don't want to make too light of it because she was favoring that leg like you said dump i have a feeling she's going to be all right and she'll get back to it Right now, we're getting ready to set. We do have an official timeout, and this is when you go, you know what? You know what's great about Hinkley? I don't know. Everything. everything. See, there you go. There's the plug. Ta-da! That's right, and you can also, <laughs> don't forget, you can also buy the DVD, even though you do get stuck with the soundtrack. That's you right. Can, but you get all the action that you're seeing right now on DVD that you can enjoy anytime. Susie Smashbox lining up for Minnesota. Racer McChaser back in the Jammer Star for Detroit. Detroit in the black once again, and Minnesota 
Interquaz. <laughs> Rachel Marie Chaser is, is one of my favorite skaters to watch. I spoke of it earlier. She's not necessarily built like your typical, blah, 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 easy for me to say, typical jammer. She is a woman of stature. She is such an athlete. She's explosive. She's ready to go. And I love Mr. Rock. And a great blocker as well. You know, she reminds me of Anya Heels. Uh, yeah. Anya Heels of Rat City. Yep. Similar, a similar build, and also just that same the, a speed skater background, and you know, not your not your classic uh, speed skater like you said. But, oh, here goes Susie Smashbox, just barely maintaining her feet, and Racer McChaser looks like she's already on Jammer D. She's at the front of the pack, but she is not advancing. Uh, what do you think's going on there? Racer McChaser is trying to slow down Smashbox and knock her back in the middle of the pack, which she has successfully done, and now she's starting to get swallowed up by the Detroit defense. There she goes. You know, you know I, th I, think, I, I think that's exactly what happened because it, uh, it looked to me like Susie Smashbox was reeled back in. But I think Racer McChaser was just, you know, Susie Smash. she respects Susie Smashbox. Oh, yeah, you have to. And so she's going to make sure that Susie Smashbox is well contained and that, that, her, that her blockers have, have control once again before she takes off and, let, and, and allow, before giving Smashbox that opening because all she needs is a tiny little opening. Yeah, I mean, that's really all it is. And Racer McChaser's hit over in turn three that pushed her out of bounds wasn't a big one. She wasn't going for shock and awe. She was going for strategy. She just bumped her out of bounds a little bit and let her get consumed by the pack. And there we were seeing some endurance, too. Racer McChaser jamming once again, back-to-back -back jams, going against Lexi Cuter from Minnesota. Detroit down 17 points. Minnesota 80 over 63. And it looks like we have just under 16 minutes to go in the second period. Racer McChaser at the front of the pack. We've got Venus Thigh Trap and Diamond Ruff at the front of the pack on the two wall for Minnesota. But they get too far forward past that 20-foot mark, and Racer McChaser gets a free pass and lead jammer. Lexi Cuter stuck at the back of the pack. And now she's gonna now she sees an opening, but there it is. So that's uh, Summer's Evil and Ghetto Barbie. Catch her at the front of the pack and form up that two wall at the last minute. Ghetto Barbie's had some really nice hits. When she ever, whenever she's involved in the pack, she is definitely she may not be necessarily a playmaker, but she's always part of the play. She's like the Palomalu of the Detroit Roller Derby League. You have a crush on Ghetto Barbie? I do. She's kind of <laughs> awesome. All right, well, Racer McChaser able to get through the pack and pick up those four points, call off that jam, secure that plus four differential. But still, Detroit in the hole, 13 points. Minnesota on top at 80 points. And who would have thunk? Number, seed number seven, and we were halfway through the second half. Yeah, halfway through the first half, we would have said impossible. But here we are halfway through the second half, only less than 15 minutes left, and Minnesota with a, a, a not inconsiderable lead over Detroit. 80 points, Minnesota, 67, Detroit, 14 minutes and 38 seconds to go. Man, a little juke move attempted there by Detroit. Booty livers. Man, booty livers. She's had a, a great game so far. There's, a, there's, not, there's more than one reason why we continue to say her name. It's not just because her name is amazing. It's because her skating has been stand up and stand out. Speaking of that, Jukebox making a great move coming out from Minnesota. Jukebox. Giving a little shimmy. And she, I guarantee you, she's going to be in this pack within the next six to eight seconds because she knows how to move. Yes, she does. But I'll tell you what, that pack moving quickly. And there's, there, goes that, and there goes Booty Livers calling off the jam. And she's going to get full four. Full four for that pass. Nice. Smart move there by Detroit. This is definitely one of those moments where it's time to crawl back up. You're very evenly matched. Every single point counts. So once you get them, call it off, move on down the line, reset the track. That's Racer it. McChaser for Detroit. Kilimanjaro. And Kilimanjaro for Minnesota in the turquoise. <laughs> I really enjoy the fact that you've brought that to light. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. I'm gonna, I'm, tonight I'm going to be going, <laughs> turquoise. <laughs> And periwinkle. <laughs> and periwinkle. <laughs> you know, and, and by next week, uh, at the rate that the, the leagues are forming, there's going to be a league, and they're going to choose periwinkle for their color. Oh, yeah. It's like, look, it's shiny, and it's almost like turquoise. <laughs> All right. Uh, whoa, who do we got out wow. there? Wow. Racer McChaser oh. busted through that pack. Looks like she's going to be lead jammer. Now she's going toe-to-toe. Toe-to-toe with uh, Kilimanjaro. But Kilimanjaro puts on a burst of speed. But Racer McChaser, she's not going to have too much trouble catching her. So it's going to be neck and neck. Racer McChaser easily just keeping keep in touch with Kilimanjaro. But Racer McChaser is the lead jammer, and she's going to call off that jam. It's going to be a scoreless jam. What, what does that mean? Well, uh, you know, that means it's time to drink up and be somebody, baby. <laughs> Make it happen. Soon enough, I'll have my second beer of the day. I don't know what happened to me, but I've been behaving myself today, and I don't know how big of a fan of that I am. <laughs> it's a little out of control. My liver's not even sore yet. 
All right, but we're, we're seeing some very smart uh, tactical play, just a very basic strategy here uh, because Detroit is behind, and both teams playing offense and defense at the same time. It doesn't matter how many points you score. It matters how many more points you score than the other jammer. So jam they're just looking for those positive or non-negative differentials to try and eat into this lead Minnesota has. You know, there's a lot of history between these leagues. This is not the first time they've seen each other. Three years ago at the Eastern Regionals, the ninth seed, who was Detroit, knocked out the second seed, who was Minnesota. So this is a little bit of a redemption in the making, maybe? I don't know. It's a really close game. Nine points, and it looks like number 91 Su for Minnesota. Susie Smash. Box. Susie Smashbox is your lead jammer. Cookie Rumble, the jammer for Detroit, heading to the penalty box, and this is another power jam for Minnesota. Last thing that Detroit wants to see at this stage in the game. Less than 12 minutes left, and there's Susie Smashbox, one of the power jammers for Minnesota in control. Lead jammer and on a scoring pass, easily getting around Polly Fesser and the rest of the Detroit back. Picks up that five points, and uh, Cookie Rumble just has to sit there and fume in the penalty box. And she's joined by another, uh, another blocker. I think that's Bruzy Sue. So that's going to be a four-on-three advantage. No. <laughs> now now an L L eliminator going to the penalty box as well. We've got a four-on-two pack. Minnesota advantage. Right when you start seeing Detroit starting to come back, gain on that lead, you have some penalties. They get in the box. We're in a power jam situation. And the way Minnesota's playing, you just can't do that and expect your team to continue to be successful. Going through right now. Susie Smashbox, another grand slam. Minnesota on a roll, increasing the score. I mean, almost every single time she passes through, it seems like she's going to get a minimum of four points. Right now, it's 95 Minnesota, 71 Detroit. Oh, that, now Polly Fester got a, p a big piece of Susie Smashbox, and Susie Smashbox hits the deck, and she calls off the jam immediately. But uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Polly Fester making her way around the outer boundary, so I don't know if she actually got a penalty. Did you? That, I mean, because they were actually, the, the Minnesota had actually stopped the pack in its tracks, completely ground to a halt, and Polly Fester may, uh, may have gotten a penalty. I. I'm looking, I'm looking to see if she's heading to the penalty box because that could be a big factor for Detroit at this stage in the game. It definitely could. And right now it looks like we're going to have a timeout for Detroit. We again want to thank our sponsors, Fast Girl Skates. You can now check them out online, fastgirlskates.com. Some people sell packages. Other people sell performance. And if you want to know who that is, check out fastgirlskates.com. And we also want to thank Hinkley Design and Production for helping DNN bring this to the masses. Whether you're in Europe, Australia, or just down the street and you're too lazy to get over here to the arena, you can watch this. And because of Derby News Network and the partnership with Hinkley Design and Production, we're bringing it to you live here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, the land did of you fried say, cheese. Did you say Australia? Who on earth would be awake at this time of night in Australia? Well, I know quite a few people that are nut jobs that are in the southern hemisphere, and they they have quickly become some of my extremely favorite people because, well, we kind of we kind of flock together, you know. I'm not known as the most sane person on the planet, and Aussies, well, I think that's enough said. <laughs> Dump truck. It's Australian for <laughs> yeah. It's Australian for dummy. <laughs> and love muffin, I think as well, you know. I'm pretty sure you got a lot of love down there. You were just down. I saw you riding a kangaroo. It was uh, you a know, t-shirt. It was tough. But you, you give them enough beef jerky, and they really slow down. <laughs> it, it, it worked in my favor. <sighs> All of our great sponsors today, we thank you so very much. 5 on 5 Magazine is the official magazine of the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. You can subscribe now at 5on5mag.com and make sure you check out the articles because they are going to be doing recaps of all of these regional games or tournaments rather and we also have Half Derby Will Travel if your derby league is experiencing growing pains check out halfderbywilltravel.com and get a free consultation also we have Sin City Skates the original derby owned skate shop and is also DNN's very first sponsor. We love Sin City Skates, so buy skates from a skater at sincityskates.com and did we mention Rockstar Skates? Yes, I believe we did, but there's no better time like the present to peat and repeat. Rockstar Skates Derby on to St. Louis. Get free shipping on any order over $50 this weekend. Use the coupon code DNN at rockstarskates.com. And would you look at the pack situation? This is this is not a nightmare for Detroit right now. They actually started with three skaters, three blockers in the penalty box and their jammer. That was because one of the skaters, in the, one of the blockers was standing up 
which meant that there was a seat open. So less than 10 seconds in that situation, but Racer McChase is starting out as the only blocker on the track. It looks like a sea of turquoise with, <laughs> with a little black dot in the middle. <laughs> Lexi Cuter jamming for Minnesota. Lexi Cuter doing a great job taking advantage of what's going on. Racer McChase here. Letting the, uh, the 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 live call announcers know how she feels because you don't want to say that kind of stuff to the officials. I think they have a 100% chance of not winning that conversation. That's right, but it's actually in the rules. Announcers are excluded from any of the abuse uh, ru- uh, the ru- abuse ordinances. <laughs> we we are abused at every turn, and we love it. That's right, but this is this is now we've seen this situation before. The team. Behind, falling behind, and they get a couple of penalties, and, and get that, and get that micro pack going. Only, and then they just keep getting a stream of penalties because they they get frustrated, they're outmatched, and they're trying to make something happen, but nothing is working, and they just end up getting more penalties. Yeah, it looks like Minnesota and Detroit haven't lost any gas, but it seems the focus has been diverted off of the goal. Detroit a little frustrated, as you were saying, and that tends to confuse your strategy. Right now, it looks like it's 109 Minnesota over Detroit, 71 with 8.35 to go. So Minnesota just taking the ball and running with it. But there's Lexi Cuter, she, but she is getting a, a very heavy jammy, jammer defense from Cookie Rumble, the jammer for Detroit, out, finally out of the penalty box. And now look at that. All of Detroit at full strength for the first time, I think, in about three jams. But, you know, Racer McChaser has to, actually has to move to catch up to the pack. It's moving so fast. That's going to be the end, the end of that jam, and it is scoreless there at the end. 109 again, Minnesota. 71, Detroit. Now eight minutes to go. This is when everything gets important. This is when everything counts. It's not a big lead Minnesota has, and it's definitely ground that can be made up by a team like Detroit. But the way Minnesota's playing... It's very much within their grasp to, con- to not let go of the lead that they have and upset the number three seed in the North Central region. Now, with, uh, now they're 38 points behind, and the record jam, the most points ever scored in a jam is 35 points. And that's, uh, that means that mo- in, in all probability, Detroit is going to need at least two jams in order, to mi- in order to come back from this, and that's if Minnesota doesn't score any more points. And they, but they've got less than eight minutes, almost only seven minutes left in the game, and that's getting really tight. Racer McChaser jamming for Detroit. On that last pass, she looks at her pivot and her blocker and goes, hey, this is what I want to do when I come through next. And then she exploded with speed, explaining that last grand slam she just scored, making sure that Detroit's uh, team has fluidity and cohesiveness. They want to be on the same page if they want to get to the end of the book. All right, and so far, two grand slams. we got Jukebox in the penalty box as Jammer. So, Racer McChaser, and that's one of the Jammers that you would want to see in this situation for Detroit on the track because she's got the power and the speed and, the, and just the ability to move other skaters out of her way. You know, she's got that blocking ability. She's got the whole package. And so she is capable of scoring, of putting up a big number jam, 25, even 30 points potentially. I mean, i, I got to give it to her. Yeah, Detroit's doing a great job. Racer, uh, Big Chaser is, is definitely the one that you want there in a power gym situation. It looks like we do have a skater down, number 25 for Minnesota. Honeydew Felon. She's up on her own recognizance and looking to make her way back to the pack. And it looked like uh, it looked like Racer McChaser doing a nice job of, bring, of putting points on the board, and, and not to mention the Detroit pack, st- slowing down and holding the pack to a standstill and allowing that opportunity for Racer McChaser, but it's Tables have turned once again. We do have about 19 seconds to go in this jam, and it will have to go to its conclusion in this power jam. And I believe the next jam is going to start in a power jam with the advantage for Minnesota for about 45 seconds to 30 seconds, somewhere in the ballpark area of that. That sounds about right. That's right. I think uh, Jukebox had served most of her penalty. If that was even a jammer switch out, it may have even been a full minute served, and that me- that would mean Razor, Razor McChaser in there for the full time as well. Min- Garmin Electra. Jamming for Minnesota. Minnesota 113, Detroit 81, 5 minutes, 19 seconds to go. You know, this is some of those games that you're going, man, I really wish I could watch it again. And the best way to do that is get a DVD. We've got Hinkley Design and Production here. They are recording this for DVD purchase at a later date. A lot of different purchases, to ha- a lot of different reasons to have these DVDs. It's not just for your entertainment. If your league, whether you're up and coming or already at the top of your game, 
you get these DVDs, and that is instant tape. That's instant real, where you're going, okay, see how they did that? Maybe we should do something like this. And go to the next league and be like, you know what? Windy City did this great. Naptown did this great. Minnesota did this great. And just keep on going down the line and grab all the strengths from your soon-to-be competitors. And that will help you further your roller derby career. Grab a DVD. Thank you. Hinkley Design and Production. And just like that, Scarman Electric get also going to the penalty box. And she's taking her time, though. So you know that This is a smart move. She wants to take as much time before Racer McChaser is released from the penalty box. And that's going to, but it's only going to be, uh, so you know what that means? That also means that Racer McChaser was in for the full minute. Because if she was in for a shortened penalty, then both jammers would have stayed in the penalty box. But there goes Racer McChaser just like that. And it's two, a three on two advantage Detroit. And Racer McChaser flies through the pack on her initial pass and now gets through Coochie Coo trapped by the, in the goat pen by Detroit. And there goes Racer McChaser, five points. Goodness, she just looks unstoppable right now. She has yet to slow down. She's cruising right on through. She knows the timing of hits because she's one of the best hitters out there. So when she sees it coming, she either just does a hit move or she'll just take the brunt of the blow and keep on going while staying in bounds. Well, Minnesota, Minnesota now looks like they're having a little trouble getting coordinated now. Now it looks like uh, Tara Skatesoff comes in and she breaks up that, that standstill that Detroit had over Tiki Torture. Tiki Torture finally getting to the front of the back, but now Tara skates off in the in the goat pen. Goodness gracious. I, Racer McChaser now going to the penalty box. It does is it ever gonna get boring during this game? I don't think so. I if don't you're know. smart, you'll purchase a DVD right now. We've just seen a steady stream of jammers going to the box now in these la in these last couple of jams. Racer McChaser, then Jukebox, then uh, then Racer McChaser again, then uh, Scarman Electra, and then Racer McChaser. <laughs> and the hits just keep on coming, ladies and gentlemen. 113 Minnesota over Detroit's 91. Three minutes, 19 seconds to go. And there it is. I mean, it, Racer McChaser came out, put 10 points on the board just like that, and then went to the penalty box. And bad news for Detroit. But, you know, it just goes to show you, man, Racer McChaser has the stuff in it. If she can, if she can just get those hit, clean hits... She can put the points, the big points, on the board. Oh, we, we have some crowd interaction here with some thumbs up and a lot of thumbs down. Everyone letting the officials know exactly how they feel. Well, I mean, uh, the result of all that, Racer McChaser may be back in the box, but she's put a big dent and actually brought them back within reach. Only 18 points. That's one jam away. One good, one solid jam away. But possibly one jam away. Very doable for a skater like Racer McChaser. This is when penalties count. Right now, you look at the box. Minnesota has an empty penalty box. Their biggest advantage is going to be to skate clean. You've got Racer McChaser down, turns this into a power jam, and you also have one of their blockers down. I cannot see who it is over there, but they're down two ladies at this point. If Minnesota can continue to skate clean with two minutes, 51 seconds to go, looks like Racer McChaser is now leaving the game for the duration. I'm sure she'll be back and uh, hanging out here with us and let us know how life is, but she's been a great player. you got to give her a big round of applause as she does leave the track. All right, that's what that official timeout was about. It looks like Racer McChaser must have gotten her seventh trip to the bye. I knew that was coming. Soon. Yeah, you knew it had to be. But Polly Fester subbing in as jammer for Detroit, and that's Booty Livers sitting in the penalty box as a blocker. But we'll, let's talk about end game. Two minutes, 45 seconds on the, on the clock. That, that official timeout may have actually given Detroit a second chance because they still have one timeout left. And they, so they can actually squeeze out at, at, at least two more jams, possibly even three if we get quick ones. But here we go. Susie Smashbox, though, on the power jam. Susie Smashbox, wow, staying in bounds while she turns the corner over in turn four. No problem at all. That woman was glued to the track. She, was, she looked like Barry Sanders on a mission. Comes right through, almost touches the track with her face while skating around. It's the athleticism of these women out here today is just impressive. We've got two minutes to go in this game, and it looks like we're going to have some more penalties getting down, and Smashbox is in a power jam situation that has just come to a conclusion. Okay, that was Polly Fester, the jammer for Detroit, going to the penalty box, but it looks like that she went by mistake, mistakenly believing she was uh, heading to the penalty box. That would have been... Phenomenal. Just one after another penalty. That's the worst possible situation, too, because this may very well be, well, uh, this may very well be the last jam. Less than two minutes left. But uh, you know what I've been seeing on these power jams in the late late in the game? Every single time, whoever's on the power jam, the pack has been able to grind the pa the, the other, the, your blockers 
have been able to grind the pack to a halt on either team. And, you know, that may be that fatigue factor because we've been seeing them going so fast the entire game. It's got to hit sometime. You can't, you just can't be skating that fast for this long and have it not affect you eventually. And so both teams looks like they might be might be suffering some with that fatigue factor. But we've got a three wall in the front stopping Polly Fester in her tracks. And we've got Lexi Cuter at the back of the pack. So the pack completely split up. The Detroit blockers stopping Lexi Cuter. But Polly Fester now managing to get around get around the Minnesota defense. Boo delivers with a little bit of positional blocking, but runs into that 20-foot wall, and Lexi Cuter able to get out, but about half a lap behind Polly Fester. Boo delivers has been one of those skaters today that has had some stellar jams at the jammer position and at the blocker position. She's always there. She understands this sport, and she's there to assist her ladies, and you have to love having someone like that on your side. Looks like we have just under 30 seconds to go in regulation. Detroit with 99 points. Minnesota with 118. This is exciting. This is why we do this. Only 19 points separating these two teams. So actually, Minnesota gaining one point over what I said earlier. But uh, actually, uh, what, uh, curious, how many seconds were on the clock when that jam ended? Was it more than 30? I think it might have been 37, if I remember. But no. Oh, there we go. It started, so that means we've got another jam. This will be the final jam. The regulation clock has run out. We'll see if we're going to get a lead jammer here in just a few moments. That's right. We've got Sista Slitcher in the jammer cap for Detroit. But there go, there goes Jukebox, and she's got lead jammer. And now all she's got to do is, all she's got to do is quit. And that's in that, and Minnesota has the game. There she goes in true style. <laughs> Minnesota comes through. Last time they were upset three years ago by Detroit, and they have returned the favor here at North Central Regionals in Green Bay, Wisconsin. What an exciting game! I mean, there are people all around this track. A lot of love going through. Bulldog. I tell you what, it has been a pleasure. You and I have to call some games together because I have had a great time. We have more live action coming to you soon. My name is Dub Truck. And this is Bulldog. And we're out of here like a couple of fat kids in dodgeball. <laughs>
off the chain. I'm gonna go, 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 I'm g